The Chandwell Cube of Truth has been submerged in water for a full 10 minutes and this print is almost as good as when it came out of the printer. Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I've been scratch building this model of a rundown Yorkshire town for the last three years. Every one of these buildings is made from card covered in paper printed on a bog standard inkjet printer. I often get asked what printer I use, what printer settings I use, what paper I use. How do I stop the glue from messing up my prints? And how on earth did I manage to get wet ballast applied without a single smudge or run of the ink? In this episode, I will show you my approach and compare it to some alternatives to help explain why I made the choices that I did. I'll look at paper, print settings and varnish. And I'll talk a little bit about ink at the end. So whether you scratch build like me or make some of the excellent kits from scale scenes or scale model scenery, this is for you. Join me then for quality decisions and the cube of truth, getting the best from printable textures. There are so many variables when working with textures, I can't possibly test them all. In this video, I'm showing a few things that I have tried before. I'm restrained to only showing what I have access to, so I can't compare laser printers to inkjets, genuine ink to cheap knockoffs, etc. But I think what I am about to show will be useful to many modelers, new and seasoned alike. I'm testing using an actual model, this 5cm cube, so that the test is as close to a real thing as I can make it. I'll be looking at three different types of paper, three approaches to varnishing, and two different sets of printer driver settings. I'll be comparing the cost, the ease of use, the print quality, and importantly, the resilience to the odd bit of spilled glue, or even water. Let's dive in then, and take a look at the paper. I'm comparing three types of paper. This is Tesco Home Office Printer Paper. It's 75 GSM and costs £4.75 for 500 sheets, making it just under one pence per sheet. My go-to paper for textures is this ProJet 110GSM matte photo paper. I bought 200 sheets of this on eBay just over two years ago for £9.76, making it just under 5 pence a sheet. I know that some people print onto sticky labels to avoid having to use glue to apply their building textures. I tend to use them only for the base layers, but I'll be testing these for textures. They're generic A4 sticky labels, and I bought them from eBay. They were £17.89 for 200 sheets, which makes them almost 9 pence per sheet, and by far the most expensive of the three papers. I use this Canon MG5753 inkjet printer, which I bought too long ago to remember. I use genuine Canon ink cartridges, which I buy from Amazon at around £15 a pop. I've never used other brands, but at the end I'll talk a bit about cheap third-party inks, and show you quite clearly why I'd avoid them. For this test, I'm using the default setting you get when printing standard, and a custom quality setting of fine with a slightly reduced magenta and a slightly increased intensity. So, three types of paper and two printer settings. Let's make a cube 5cm by 5cm by 5cm. I'm using Scale Scenes Ashlar, Brown Brick and Slate Roof Tiles, as these are the textures that I use most often. I'm including a window, a lintel and a sill, as this will test the flexibility and foldability of the paper and I'm including some tiny N-scale text from a scale foot high to a scale 4 cm high to test the readability. For good measure, I'm going to test the paper with no varnish, a coat of matte varnish, and a coat of matte varnish with a coat of ultra matte varnish on top. So therefore each face of the cube will comprise three strips. So out it pops on basic printer with basic settings. The same bit of paper goes through the printer again. Using the fine settings, the print takes a long time to emerge. But there we go. Let's take a look. Basic paper, basic print is actually quite good. These bricks are just 1.5mm by 0.6mm and they are legible. Here's the fine settings. The actual print doesn't look much different. It's just darker. It uses more ink, so the colours do come out a bit deeper. But can you tell the difference? I think to be honest, the basic settings are better than the fine ones on this paper. What about the label? These are basic labels and I think you can tell. You can get photo quality labels, but that's not what these are. These are just basic labels and I think you can tell. The definition between the bricks is not as good as on the basic paper and it's definitely more grainy and fluffy around the edges. Here's the photo paper. The basic settings are bright and well defined, although the brick looks nothing like the dark brown that it was on the computer screen. Here with the fine settings though, it really comes to life. The colour matches what I see on the screen and every single brick 
is well defined. The mortar, just 700ths of a millimetre thick, is clear as a bell. The half millimetre tall text is readable, and the number 4 below it, just 0.4 millimetres tall, is legible. So, what have we learnt? At a normal viewing distance, all three perform well. It's only when you really look closely that you see the obvious benefit of the photo paper. Is it worth paying five times as much for? I film my models really close up, so I think it is. But if it was a normal layout for normal viewing, and if it was only down to print quality, I would say no, it's not worth it. But let's continue. I draw the cube in Inkscape and print its outline to sticky labels to help me accurately cut it from one millimetre card. I've included a window in each face so I can test what the paper is like to fold around its edges and to make sills and lintels. The cube is glued together with PVA with the help of a scale model scenery right angle jig. I'm starting with the photo paper since this is my usual method. It cuts nice and cleanly with the scalpel. When I make buildings at sharp corners, I colour the edge of the paper with a watercolour pencil. This removes the white edge of the paper and keeps everything nicely blended together on the finished model. The paper is sturdy and takes the colour well. I cover the cube surface with PVA glue for my applicator and drop the print straight on top. The print sits on top of the glue for a while, which means that I can slide it around until it is in exactly the right position. In these crucial 10 seconds, I can wiggle it this way and that, smoothing it down until it is in exactly the right place. I'm quite inaccurate in my initial laying down of the piece, and my hands shake a bit, so this feature of PVA over some more rapid glues is always a lifesaver for me. What about the basic paper? It cuts well, and the colour goes on the edge well. It's a bit more floppy than the photo paper, because it's thinner, but this isn't a problem. PVA onto the cube, and paper onto the PVA. This wasn't as good as the photo paper. The glue is absorbed into the paper quite rapidly, and although I could still slide it around a bit, it stuck fast much more quickly than the photo paper did. I can also feel undulations below the paper. It's not as smooth as the photo paper was. Let's try the label. Once cut, I added the watercolour pencil to the edges, with the backing still on. This kept it nice and sturdy, and it took the pencil well. Once peeled, it felt delicate and a little awkward in my hand. Applying it to the surface was quite stressful. I had to get it aligned perfectly as there is no sliding a sticky label to get it into place. I tried once, twice, miles off on the top corner. A third time, okay, that'll have to do. It looks okay, it's not as well aligned as the other two, and it feels bumpy like the basic paper did. On the other one, I tried adding the pencil to the already peeled label. That wasn't a nice experience, and I would not recommend it. The photo paper is the outright winner here. It's easy to work with, forgiving of mistakes in alignment, and generally much more pleasurable to use. The sticky label is in a firm last place. Time to wrap the texture around the window aperture. I slice the texture and then gently fold the texture inwards. Apply glue to the flaps and then use my crochet hook to tightly press the flap around the edges. The photo paper takes this abuse well. The flaps bend around and stick tightly. The print remains and no white edges appear. I repeat with the basic paper and the sticky label. Slice, fold, both worked well. I expected the basic paper to tear in the wet glue, but it did not. Because the basic paper and the sticky label are thinner than the photo paper, they each folded more easily and each had a crisper line. Although barely perceptible, the photo paper has a more pronounced curve to the fold than the other two. So in the folding around the edges test, the photo paper is in last place. The lintels and sills are tiny. They cut out of all papers easily enough with the scalpel. They take the watercolour pencil as before. The glue on the two papers makes it possible to slide the tiny components around until they are in the right place. And the folds are as before. A downside of the glue is it sometimes catches and pulls off the top layer of photo paper on these tiny parts. I just dab them with the grey pencil and it all blends together and vanishes. Working with such tiny parts in sticky label is interesting. Peeling the backing is tricky. Once positioned, again you have to be very accurate, it sticks down nicely. And folding around without the glue is actually quite a pleasure. It's tight and crisp, and really is quite good. I'd go so far as to say the label wins here. My sills are always a little wobbly, 
but the sticky label has worked nicely and these tiny 1mm sills look the best on the sticky label faces of the Cube of Truth. I've tried loads and loads of varnishes in my time and I've settled on two from AK Interactive. I use matte varnish first. This varnish is a nice consistency and goes onto the prints quite well. Let's apply it to the cube and see what happens. The photo paper takes the varnish nicely. No smudges, no colour bleeding. Let's do the basic paper. I fully expected the ink to run here on the basic paper. I've read many comments over the years that others who try this get terrible results with running ink. I was surprised that this did not happen to me. The varnish went on first time with barely a smudge. My first impression wasn't exactly right as we'll see later, but for now this is looking good. I did notice though that the varnish on the brush began to take on a pink tint, so it was obviously lifting off some of the ink. I had a similar experience with a sticky label. The varnish went on well enough, but caused a much bigger colour tint to the varnish. I also experienced bubbling where the label had lifted off the surface underneath. This settled back down as the varnish dried and wasn't a problem. I use AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish as a finishing layer. Because it's so runny, I find it does cause the ink to bleed sometimes, so I always add it on top of the dried matte. Let's apply it on top of the matte varnish and look at the difference it makes. Here's the cube. No varnish on the top stripe, matte on the second and ultra matte on the third. It looks great front on. But tilt it back and you can see how not matte the middle stripe is and how dead flat the bottom one is. From this angle you can even see that the matte paper reflects more light than the part finished with the ultra matte. It really is as flat as flat. I don't know about you but I am a messy modeler. I get glue all over the place and even sometimes splash my models with water. Let's now subject the cube of truth to some mess. You can see along the top of the basic paper side that the ultra matte varnish from the adjacent side has caused the ink to run and turn yellow. On each side of the cube I drop a big blob of water on each of the three treatments. One with no varnish, one with just matte varnish and one with matte varnish with the ultra matte varnish on top. I leave the drop there for about 8 seconds before dabbing it away with tissue. You can see that the basic print on the basic paper has immediately run. I have a big yellow blotch. The varnished parts are ok. The effect was worse on the fine printed basic paper. Probably because there was more ink there in the first place. I saw the same result with the sticky label. Let's try the photo paper. This has survived intact. So has this. Interesting. Let's try glue. I add glue and then wipe it away with my fingers, just like I would if I spilled some whilst making a model. All six sides survived this process intact. I noticed no difference between the treatments. I'm just left with a shiny stain, but we can sort that out later. Let's get a bit more extreme. This time I dropped a lot of water onto the cube and left it for a full minute before dabbing it away. I wonder what happens. So then, what am I left with? Basic paper, basic print. Clearly not happy with the water. The ink has blotched quite a bit. The effect is worse on the basic paper fine print. You can also see where the ink has lost some of its depth when I brushed on the matte varnish here. The effect is about the same with the sticky label. If anything, it's a bit worse. The ink on the two photo paper sides is still intact. There has been no appreciable ink bleed. The basic print side has bubbled a bit here in the water, but this went away as it dried. The tiny text is still readable. The whole thing looks a mess though because of all the glue I've added and wiped away. All of my buildings look like this by the time I've finished. What can I do about it? Simple. I just use the ultra matte varnish and cover the whole thing one last time. Here you can see all of the shiny spills and splodges. I'm going to brush on the ultra matte varnish across the whole cube face. I'm applying the ultra matte onto the base print, the matte varnish and the ultra matte on all three stripes. I apply the varnish quite liberally and once it is dry there is no trace of any shiny splodge. It's bubbled a bit again here but I'm sure that this will go away as the paper dries. So let's look at what I ended up with. Basic paper. Crisp folds but terrible when wet. OK at taking varnish, poor print quality at close inspection. 
Sticky label. Worse at taking varnish and getting wet. Crisp folds. Frustrating to apply in general. You really do need to get it right first time. But actually quite nice to apply for the small parts. Much less glue splatter. Poor print quality at close inspection. And the photo paper. At only five pence per sheet, this paper is superb. Look at how white the text at the bottom is, how crisp the bricks are, even after three coats of varnish. Look at how crisp the textures up here are. They've been underwater for a full minute without any protection at all. The photo paper put up with a lot of abuse and it's come out unscathed. I'm surprised by how well the basic paper and label performed with the ink. I was expecting much more dramatic results. The labels I've used previously for my back scene run horribly when threatened by anything even slightly wet. This is the same varnish, same printer and same ink. It's even had two coats of Winsor & Newton spray varnish. What about UV protection? I see a lot of discussion about applying spray varnish for UV protection and also some discussion about how expensive genuine ink is and why it's better to use cheaper third party ink. My friend Adrian put all of this to the test, only using Epsom, not Canon, ink. But he printed the same texture using genuine ink on the right and cheap ink on the left. He used four different coverings, Non, Perma Protect, Hairspray with UV Protection and Winsor & Newton UV Protection Matte Varnish. Once he'd done that, he left it on his windowsill for a full six months. Look at the results and judge for yourself. I noticed two things. The cheap ink has faded to almost completely monochrome, whilst the Epsom ink has kept its colour much better. And, regardless of the protection, there is almost no perceptible difference in the amount of fading. I would say that the UV protection has not done anything in the six month test. Maybe he'd need to leave it for longer than six months. But regardless, I think that this speaks for itself. Use genuine ink. You get what you pay for. So here's the cube of truth. I really enjoyed making it and abusing it. It's quite clear that the photo paper has outperformed the others. I've heard from my channel members though that they see different results. They see ink bleed even with this paper and this varnish. That must be down to printer ink then. Or the climate in our rooms. I've got no idea. Who knows? But for one last test, I'm going to chuck the cube into this bowl of water and leave it for 10 minutes. I wonder what will happen. So at this point it's no longer a comparison as the two photo paper sides have been fully varnished and the others haven't. But I wanted to see just what would happen. Being only one layer thick, the card has sagged and warped a bit as you might expect. And this face has come off entirely. But the simple PVA glue has held elsewhere. The flaps around the windows have come undone and the ink has faded and run on most of the faces leaving a green tinge. But what's important is the combination that I use photo paper, fine print and three coats of varnish. The varnish is applied to the outer surface only, there's no need to do both sides. And look, other than a slight fading on the row with only one coat of ultra matte, this is almost as good as when it came out of the printer. I'll leave you with this. Use decent materials and treat them well with varnish and your card models can withstand a heck of a lot of abuse. I hope you found this interesting, useful or ideally both. I probably haven't tested your preferred method, but I'd encourage you to put your materials to the test. We invest a lot of our time in our models, and we owe it to them and ourselves to make them as sturdy and as resilient as possible. Go to this video if you want to have a closer look at the materials and tools that I use, and it's got links to everything in that video's description. So from the Cube of Truth and me, until the next video, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you then.